Hey people, so I've got the um, engine out here on a bench. We're going to start the teardown process. Look, I just want to keep as much of this together as I can. So um, sometimes I'll take brackets off, sometimes I'll leave them on. All I want to do is get to the point where I can rip these heads off um, and have a look what's going on. Now this engine is similar to all of the V6s in the Kia Dash Hyundai range. Um, look, they're a pretty solid sort of an engine, but they do have their issues. Um, so follow along. Um, if you've got any comments or questions as you go, make sure you list them down below and uh, continue watching the video. Um, look, I'm just literally going to start at the front of the engine. What I want to do is just remove some of this wiring harness and stuff so I can just get to some of these bigger pieces. Like I said before, I'm going to sometimes like just take that whole bracket off rather than trying to undo the electrical clip because look, the bracket's probably going to be in my way anyway. So I'm going to leave as much together as I can. Look, you're not going to go too far wrong with 10 mil sockets, 12 mil sockets. Um, that's pretty well what most of this is going to be. I'm going to do this pretty fast and not go through each step, um, but just watch along. Now with the number of bolts and brackets that are going to come off here, I'd strongly just suggest running the bolts back in wherever possible. Now I don't usually label things too much because um, it's pretty hard to actually get them confused. squeeze point on the side. The O2 sensor, I will unplug that one. Take these coils out, now these have a bit of a locking tab here. Just gotta pop that back first. Then we can just squeeze them. Get these coils out. I'm just literally kind of following my way around, just taking off big bits as I go. Now I've just got this big sort of section of wiring here, so I'm just gonna have a look what I can still leave plugged in and what I'm gonna to have to pull out. Um, so we'll take this one off here, just following it around, just zip this bracket out of the way. Here. And then back to the O2 sensors. So we'll definitely undo this, this one here. And I'll just pull that there. Okay, now here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Look, we could take that one clip off or we could take two bolts off. Um, I find it easier to take the two bolts and the little bracket you can just run those two bolts back in. When we're lining things back up, it's so much easier to find where that bracket goes than where to find that clip goes. Still attached here. It's pretty easy just to kind of lift this up and figure out what we're still attached to and what we're not. And here's a little tricky, it looks like this little locking tab has to come out sideways. Starting to get that clear. And the clip just in here. Let's take the bracket here. Another example here of I'm just gonna take a big assembly rather than undoing a plastic clip. There's a few of these with the little bit of blue plastic uh, sort of locking tab in these ones. The one on the top 
that little piece was broken but you're still able to see the blue section just inside it and then you could just unlock it just with a little pick okay and we'll just take the bracket rather than pull that out Three there. Now, we've still got a few things on the front here. Oh, there's one hidden right in here. Looks like a position sensor, crank position sensor. So down in here, we have what looks like the crank angle sensor. You can get a little bit of light on there for you. Uh, a little bit difficult to move out. It has a blue tab on the side of the clip. Um, you need to slide that blue tab out before you're able to get the uh, connector off. So it just sits right in underneath that sort of thermostat area. Now I've got this sort of funky style here that's got a like a rotating locking clip. Um, it's got a little clip on the front. You just clip that and you can rock this up and around. Pop that one off. And the last little bit of electrical cabling I have, it comes in under this heat shield here, under this uh, front exhaust manifold that goes into the starter motor. So this manifold has to come off anyway, so I'm going to zip that off just to make that super easy for myself. Get the heat shield off first. And our first 12 mil for a while. This one that holds the dipstick tube on. Pop that battery sensor wiring out of the way. And just be able to put a little twist. Get the dipstick tube out of the way. Heat shields off. It's got a 12 mil just securing it down to the block down here. Now there's eight 14 mil bolts running around on this manifold. The last one, just be ready to hold it when you rip it off just so it doesn't drop. That out of the way. Now the heat shield for this starter motor. Now that's so much easier than doing it underneath this exhaust space, but I guess it could be done. Now I didn't count them, but um, hey, there's plenty of connectors, clips, brackets, etc. here. That should be the wiring harness we can just get completely out of the way. Next I want to remove this thermostat housing. Now it's quite a... Um, serious looking thermostat housing because obviously it bolts to the head on this side bolts to the head on this side comes up it has some um, coolant lines that come into our throttle body and it's got a big connector down in the middle there as well pull that off look you're going to get a little bit of coolant but then we've got a series of 12 mil nuts and bolts. It's a bolt underneath. Then a nut. Nut on the top. Exactly the same on the other side. It's a slightly different shape here, but it's still just one bolt and two nuts. And with that, we've got a connector that sits obviously in here. I'm assuming it's some sort of an O-ring or something that sits on. Um, we should just be able to give this a little bit of a wiggle. I'm getting a bit of coolant dropping out. Feels like it's a little bit stuck on this center passage that goes through here. So just 
just going slow. It's got it. So there's a nice tight O-ring that sits in on there. A couple of gaskets. And in that process, I did hear something drop down. So we'll find out what that was. Okay, what I heard drop when it fell out was just one of the little metal collars or sleeves that just sit up in there. And it just makes sure that you're not cracking the plastic. So super important that we put that back. 